Split testing with Google has, has literally changed the game when it comes to Google ads simply because you have a lot more control over your products. You have a lot more things that you can just play around with when it comes to Google. And trust me, doing this alone can literally add six figures to your overall Google ads revenue. And I'm not even joking about this because let's first of all define what split testing is. Split testing is essentially testing two different things together in order to find a better version of that same overall basic thing. So for instance, you could be split testing different titles, images, prizes, even descriptions for that matter. And you may be more familiar with terms like A-B testing, or you may have done this yourself on Facebook ads, Pinterest ads, TikTok ads, etc. because it is very easy to split test on these other ad platforms. Majority of the people split test different ad copies. So inside of one Facebook ads ad set, you would have two to three different ad copies. That's basically split testing. However, with Google ads, obviously, if you already use it, you know that there's no kind of way for you to split test ad copies. Well, first of all, because you don't have ad copies to begin with, but also second, because Google doesn't really offer any type of specific way to split test, especially those Google shopping ads. So exactly how do you go about this process? How do you make sure that your products are getting tested the right way with the right things and that they're performing at their peak levels? Because believe it or not, if you have a few winning products that are bringing you $1,000 a day, just a quick little split test can be the reason why you end up doing 5,000, even $10,000 a day with that given product. Now, before we actually talk about the exact strategies, how to do it, etc., let's start off by talking about the benefits because it's important for you to know why you should even spend time, money, and energy thinking about this and doing this. So first things first, before talking about even the benefits, you should only be considering split testing those products which are actually winning products for you, which are actually bringing you money right now. And I don't mean a product that just got you one sale recently or got you two sales about five months ago. This product should be a winning product right now. And a winning product is something that is getting you consistent sales, but also to begin with has gotten at least three to five sales. So whatever products you have right now, go through them and make sure they follow this given metric because otherwise there is no reason for you to split test. And the main reason of why I abide by this metric no matter what store I'm running is because split testing essentially lets you make your current winning products bigger winning products. What that means is it kind of makes it easier for you to optimize because now on a product level, you are making those changes. You're kind of giving Google the ability to go out into the market, take these two products, which by the way, it's going to consider as two completely separate products, and then try to find out exactly which is the real winning product from these two winning products. And obviously, if you already begin with a winning product, you know that this product already works. So now it's a matter of whether that change that you made, whether it was a new title, new image, lower pricing or higher pricing, etc. If that is what is causing this product to either get more sales or to get less sales. And because you already optimized this product at a product level, now it makes it the whole process with actual Google ad side optimization much, much easier for you. But also the main thing is split testing allows you to give your products the maximum potential available and the maximum chances available for it to become a real winning product. And that again goes back to the main thing I mentioned, which is doing this can alone change your daily sales from $1,000 a day all the way up to 5,000, even $10,000 a day. So basically split testing is very important and you should know how to split test properly. Which brings me to the next point of this video, which is how do you exactly split test properly because as you already know Google doesn't necessarily give you a good way to split test anything and there is no real option for you to go about doing this so there are three major strategies when it comes to split testing and I highly recommend that you go about all of these three main strategies on your Shopify store because like with anything out there Every ad account is different. So strategy one, which I'm about to mention, might not really work for you, but strategy two and three might do much better. And on another hand, for somebody else, strategy one might crush it, absolutely. So again, you want to make sure you're testing all of these three strategies out. But strategy number one, and this strategy involves you using that main winning campaign, which has that main winning product, and kind of going about split testing within that main individual campaign. Now let's start off with a basic scenario. Let's say you have a 3D printer, printer within your main general testing campaign and so far this 
product alone has gotten you about seven sales and it has been consistent sales. So this week alone, you got about three sales. Last week, you got two sales and so forth. So this product has been showing a lot of consistency. The next step for you is to go about starting off that split testing process. Now, before you use any of these strategies, here's exactly how you go about with the split testing process. First things first, you need to go on your main dashboard, whether you're using Shopify, WooCommerce, whatever the case might be, go on your main product dashboard and do duplicate this product. It is very important for you to do this step correctly. Otherwise, this split test is going to be an absolute mess. So what you want to do is you want to go on your dashboard, you want to start split testing. And what you want to do is you want to duplicate this product and only change whatever variation that you are trying to split test, which means if you're trying to split test the title, make sure your pricing images, descriptions, and even the reviews is all the same. Only that specific variant that you are trying to split test is different. In another case, if you're trying to split test the price, make sure everything else besides the price is the same exact thing. Otherwise, there is no reason for you to split test because now you're testing multiple different things all at once and you won't know whether it's the price that's causing you to get more sales or less sales or whether it's some other thing which accidentally you forgot to change. So you want to make sure you do this number one step before you apply any of these other strategies. But once you have duplicated that product, once you have made sure everything is the same besides that specific thing, what you want to split test, now go ahead and add this new duplicated product variation inside that main general testing campaign where the original product is. Because now what you will be doing is you'll be using this main general testing campaign as that split testing campaign and you will be split testing these two different things inside there. And oftentimes, whenever I suggest something like this, a lot of questions arise regarding what would happen with the bidding, how the algorithm would kind of react to this and so forth. So let me kind of answer that very, very briefly. What's going to basically happen is now Google is going to assume that these two products are completely separate products. So they will go inside the auction at completely random times on their own basis, on their own merits. So if product number one, Google thinks is going to be doing better, then it will try to win more auctions for it. If product number two, the duplicated product Google thinks is going to do better, it will try to push that more and more forward. And this is just going to be on a random basis completely. So even though these two products are the exact same, they will not necessarily be interfering with each other. However, they might bid against each other because you are now targeting the same kind of keywords. But don't worry because this is going to benefit you even if right now initially it might kind of drop your sales. So don't worry about that because our main goal is for you to figure out exactly which variation from these two is going to do the best so you can start pushing that out more often. And in terms of the campaign itself, if you're doing like manual bidding, manual CPC, enhanced CPC, whatever the case may be, you don't need to bid any higher. You don't need to bid any different from what you're originally doing right now. Make sure all of the other things like the settings is the exact same on the campaign side because we want to only be testing one factor one at a time. So just go ahead and push this product inside that main general testing campaign. And what you want to do is you want to let this product sit within that testing campaign for a full four days before actually going in and before actually trying to change anything, before actually trying to optimize the campaign, the product, etc. Because initially the campaign will be trying to understand what product you just pushed within the campaign. It might not really have a clear idea of what to do with this new variation that you added, whether it should go ahead and push it into the same auctions or different auctions as the main winning product. So again, only start the general optimization process. And if you don't know how to optimize your campaigns, go ahead and watch my video that I released on how to do proper Google shopping campaign optimization. The link will be in the top right, right above my head. This is the same way I do it for my e-commerce brands as well as my clients e-commerce brands under my agency, Yoro Marketing, which if you're doing about $30,000 or more in sales, you need help taking it to the next level and you would want us to work together, go ahead and go on my website at yourmarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how I can personally help you scale your e-commerce brand. But that is pretty much the main strategy that I use for testing different products. It's better to just push this duplicated product inside of what's already working instead of trying to create a brand new campaign. And now you don't know if that new campaign is gonna work or not because you don't have any previous data. And now you're testing multiple different things instead of just what you should be testing, which is something within that product itself. So that's strategy number one and my most usual go-to strategy. But don't kind of disregard these other two strategies because these other two strategies can also bring you a lot of results. Strategy number two is a little bit different. Now this strategy actually involves you creating a brand new campaign, but here's the twist. 
with this brand new campaign, you'll be starting this at the same settings as your original campaign. So if you were using a general testing campaign originally with a 40 cent bid, this new campaign will also be a general testing campaign with a 40 cent bid with the same priority and so forth. But you will not be adding all of the products which were in the original campaign. You will only be adding the main winning product and this duplicated product which you're trying to test within this new general testing campaign. And the main task of this new general testing campaign is for you to kind of make it into a split testing campaign on its own, which which means any future split testing things that you would like done, you would just come to this campaign and you would just push the products into this campaign alone. No interfering with the original campaign or no doing anything else. Just use this as a split testing campaign because it will be running on the same settings as the original winning campaign. But the strategy now stays the same. You wanna push the main winning product into this campaign as well as the duplicated product. And you wanna let these products run for a full four days before you go in and before you start any types of the optimization processes mentioned on my YouTube channel. And again, we wanna give it full four days for this new campaign's algorithm to kind of understand what's going on, what the products are within this campaign, what their keywords are, how they should be shown, etc. And you don't wanna rush things when it comes to this. So again, make sure to run it for at least four days and then begin the general optimization process. By the end of this, you should have a clear winner of exactly which one Google is preferring, whether it's product number one, or product number two and now you can just let these two run while you go in and add more and more split test products later on maybe you have some other winning products where you would like to split test now this campaign becomes sort of like a split testing campaign in general for everything that you have within your product section and you later on you can go in and actually start excluding stuff but i'll be talking about this more towards the later portion of this video strategy number three is a bit different from these two strategies you'll be now creating a brand new campaign specifically a standalone campaign just for these two products alone and you'll be starting it at the same bids and everything but for the settings for the actual bidding type you will be doing maximized clicks only for this campaign and you'll be again letting it run for around four days until it starts to really understand what the products are and so forth and now with this strategy you can actually let this campaign run and you can go ahead and exclude these products once you have found a few winning variations from this campaign and then later on add new products that you want to test with within this campaign alone but the key thing with this strategy is that you should only let about two to three different variants run at the same time with this new campaign you don't want to do the same thing you would do with strategy number two where you just add a bunch of products and you continuously keep on adding new products while running the others run here you want to actually exclude stuff and then test other stuff and this strategy is better if you want to kind of hone in on the main things which you are testing without the interference of other things and other types of keywords which you know can work in your benefit but you should definitely give strategy number one and strategy number two a try as well because there might be better ways for you to go about testing these things but these three things are my main go-to strategies when it comes to actually split testing with google ads now you might want to be testing a bunch of different things when it comes to google ads and when it comes to your actual campaigns but here's the exact step-by-step -step process which i recommend that you go about testing things because there is a specific specific hierarchy as to how I go about testing my own different products. Number one thing I like to start testing with my products is the description. Yes, the description, the thing that makes the least impact. And this is simply because I personally believe your titles, your images, your prizes make the biggest impacts and you don't want to necessarily go about just starting testing with those things because again, they could either make or break your product. I like to kind of take it with a subtle strategy and I like to start with the description because I like to make sure my description is perfect before I actually start going about testing other things. Out. So number one thing I like to start up testing is the description. Number two thing is actually the title. Now here is where I like to try around different keywords. Maybe I insert more keywords within the duplicated product and I try to see if adding keywords or subtracting keywords really does the trick. And I will do this about three to five times to really try to understand which specific variation is bringing me the best bang for my buck before I move on to actually testing the next thing, which is the pricing. Now, of course, pricing makes a huge difference. So what I will do is at first, I will actually increase the pricing to see how that impacts conversion rates. If that impacts it severely, then I might just decrease it little by little. But normally, I don't like to do lower pricing because I like to always focus on increasing my profits, increasing my sales. So I don't like to go lower. But after pricing, I like to test different images out because again, images can really make a big difference in your CTR, which of course, 
affects your quality score and as a result affects how many people are on your website if people are buying your products or not etc so these four things are the major things which i always test around when it comes to my product pages and i do recommend that you kind of follow this testing process from again number one starting with the description and ending it off with the actual images as well but let's say you have done all of these things perfectly you have found one of these strategies to work for you what is the next step once you actually find a winning variation now here is where it gets a bit tricky in my own experience what i found is that actually going in and editing the original product is not necessarily the best way to go about this because sometimes even if the duplicated product is getting you results with those same exact titles or those same exact descriptions if you edit the original thing just because you edited the original thing it might actually restart the optimization and sometimes the restarted optimization might never catch up to the level of the new duplicated variants success so what i like to do is i like to kind of not touch the original product at all and i just let the duplicated variant run but now i duplicate that variant one more time and i start testing something completely different within that same exact winning campaign so for instance any given campaign might have three to five different variants running and each of these might be testing completely different things from each other so the first two might i might have started off with testing description but the third one is now testing a different pricing the fourth one because i found a winning pricing is now testing a different image itself so again this might add a bunch of different variants within that original campaign but it is not necessarily going to harm you in any way because all of these things they're completely different from each other one way or another so in essence for google what that means is that each of these is a separate product from each other and it's going to kind of give you the best chance of just testing out different things just to see what is working and what is not working and over time as these different variants run within those main testing campaigns you will start to understand which is working which is not working and you can actually start excluding things which are completely bombing and completely not working at all but now you will have one winning product with completely different variants from each other which means you will have multiple different winning variants for that same exact product and that is exactly how you will be able to scale from that one thousand two thousand dollar a day in revenue number to five thousand ten thousand and so forth you want to keep things very simple this is not rocket science don't try to really make it complicated by doing a bunch of different things by trying to go in and exclude some stuff and then leave some other stuff running just kind of think of it as a skyscraper you want to first have your main foundation which is your main winning product and then build it layer by layer so variant by variant and each layer try something different maybe have some kind of different style to the design maybe have some kind of different material and so forth so you just keep on building layer by layer just test different things out like images descriptions pricing and so forth until you get to the point where you just kind of went through everything and you literally can't test anymore and at that point this is where you start adding more winning products that are kind of similar to the original winning product but might be a different color specification etc but that is pretty much it as to how you go about split testing with google ads now if you want to kind of take your split testing to the next level or just your google ads account to the next level go on my website at guromarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how i can personally help you scale your e-commerce brand to the next level again there's no obligations for this free call as long as you're doing about thirty thousand or more a month in sales i will be making a free strategy report for you to see how you can kind of implement things on your own or have me do them for you but if you find any type of value in this video destroy that like button and destroy that subscribe button and i will see you in my next video